Cardinal, first of all, congratulations. It's been a couple of months now since you stood in front of Pope Francis. What, what is that moment like? I was somewhat uh, numb because there were so many thoughts that were going through my mind and heart. I thought about my mom and dad and family members, my grandmother, but it was very humbling. For Wilton Gregory, the Catholic Church's first ever African-American cardinal, that historic journey to the Vatican began in Catholic school on the south side of Chicago. You knew fairly early on at a young age that, that you wanted to enter the priesthood. The priests and the sisters in that parish were just extraordinary human beings, and I was just mesmerized mm -hmm. by them. I decided after about six, seven weeks that I was going to be a priest. He was ordained in 1973, rising up the ranks in Illinois, serving as the Archbishop of Atlanta for 15 years. In 2019, Pope Francis appointing him Archbishop of Washington before elevating him to Cardinal last fall. Do you think the fact that we finally have an, an African-American Cardinal is, is somewhat overdue? When a moment occurs like this, the reaction of a lot of people is, why did it take so long? Well, it took so long because we're still grappling with racism and with exclusion. That's still a part of the world in which we live. I'm curious, in your journey through the priesthood, have you had to deal with racism? Oh, sure. I don't know of any African-American who hasn't tasted the bitter cup of discrimination. With faith in our Lord Jesus Christ now, as long as I was formally dressed, I'm treated with great respect and affection. But if I take off my clerics to go out, I'm in the pool of every other African-American man in Washington. I can remember on one occasion, maybe 15 or so years ago, and I was being hosted at a very exquisite uh, Palm Springs golf club. And another individual, he said, uh, you can put my clubs on the golf cart. I had to say, well, I can have somebody retrieve your clubs, but I'm here to play golf. I never forgot that, but it's good for me not to lose a grounding in the experience of what it means to be an African-American man in our country. It's an experience he learned about from a young age when his grandmother took him to the funeral of Emmett Till, the black teenager brutally murdered in 1955. Why did you go? Well, I was only, uh, Al, I was only about six or seven, maybe eight, I can't remember. It was, I guess, part of the rite of passage. The wake was attended by just thousands of black people on the south side of Chicago. I mean, it was a defining moment. Right. Fast forward to today and all the racial unrest and the, the injustice. How has that affected you and how you minister? It's sobering because it's a reminder that in spite of all that we've been able to accomplish, mm -hmm. the issue is still there. How do we deal with that? We have to listen to each other. Dialogue demands both motions. Mm -hmm. It has to, you have to say what's in your heart, but then you have to say, now, what's in your heart with the real intent of hearing what another says. It's that spirit of dialogue that Cardinal Gregory says he hopes to have with his most prominent parishioner, President Joe Biden. Last month, the two standing side by side, remembering the lives taken by the coronavirus. Harmony is a balm that seeks to comfort and strengthen us as a single people. What message were you trying to convey? I was just inviting our, our nation to identify with the fact that if we're going to heal, we have to remember that we have to heal together. As President Biden starts to lead, do you expect to perhaps lend him any words of advice? I'm the Archbishop of Washington. He is a Catholic who lives in Washington. I'm his Archbishop. He's not gonna be on speed dial, and I hope I'm not on his speed dial, but there will be moments when I will be able to uh, speak to him about faith, about the, the works that he's trying to accomplish that we can be supportive of, but also areas where we're not gonna agree. But I'm gonna always try to do it in a respectful way. In fact, guys, uh, among those areas of disagreement, the church's stance on abortion. In fact, on Inauguration Day, the president of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops issuing a statement saying some of Biden's policies would, 
quote, advance moral evils. Cardinal Gregory told me he felt the statement was, quote, ill-timed and reiterated that the church and the president agree on many other things. But again, the bottom line, dialogue. I thought that was a... So it was really just an honor uh, to sit and talk with him. Just a, a terrific man of faith. Helps you... Uh, get back into your faith as well. Mm -hmm. That was a phenomenal interview. And for a lot of us who haven't heard him speak before um, like that, it, it kind of showed us another, another yeah, picture of him. It's a great conversation yeah, now, especially that anecdote about him on Thank the you. golf course uh, <laughs> some years ago. That's going to stay with you. Yeah. That was yeah, good. That was All right. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.